Hi, this is Pastor Star Scott, and we're here with another segment of Miracles in Sterling. You know, it's just primarily for the purpose of helping us to see that we're to see signs and wonders in the church today. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall. And many of the miracles, and one of them is laying hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. And so, great testimonies of miracles today in His church, an encouragement for you to believe for these things to be common in your church. Not an exception, this is normal Christianity. Let's look and see what God's done in the lives of these people. Today on Sword of the Spirit, covered by God. Well, it's exciting. We're, we're just really thankful that you guys can come and just share the good things that, that Father's done for you. You know, both of you being raised in church and you know, knowing, knowing the goodness of the Lord and walking your lives out, both of you, most of your lives, just being faithful to God. And, and then all of a sudden in your life, you're going through the, the normal parts. God wants to bless us with, with children, you know, the children are the heritage of the Lord. And, and that blessing comes along. And then all of a sudden, that, this time of rejoicing and blessing looks like a tragedy. You know, and so it's like, oh, God, you know, what, what's going on here? And, you know, it's so often people will ask, of course, the questions why. And we're taught not to ask why, but when hard times come, a lot of times we ask why anyway. You know, it's just in all of us and we're overwhelmed at times. But knowing and, and believing in the goodness of God you know, you've, you all have been taught all your lives that, you know, by the stripes of Jesus, we're healed and the prayer of faith saves the sick. And, and so, you know, those are those are the the doctrines that we live by. But the the process of sovereignty as it works itself out and the love of God and the goodness of God as he shows himself in ways that sometimes we don't understand. But believing in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And so here you are as a young couple and all of a sudden, you know, this tragedy comes. So maybe you can just kind of share with, with the people, what is it that, uh, that was happening in your life at this time, this excitement of, of you know, being pregnant and having twins now, you know, and twins is exciting any way you cut it. But uh, maybe you can bring us up to date and share, you know, where you found yourselves and then what Father did to lead you uh, through this process to where you truly had to believe God. It became a matter of life and death. And uh, I like what, uh, what John had said to the doctor at that one point, and I'll let him speak that in, in the testimony, but, but how we have to stand on the Word of God and, and, uh, and not take the world's <clears throat> standards or values and bring them into the church, that mm -hmm. we know what God's values are and we're going to live by them to His glory, regardless of what the cost might be. So why don't you just share... How, how all this came about. Who wants to start? Sure. No, all right, here you go. Um, well, we were very, we were very excited to be um, having, um, being pregnant finally. It had been a long road for us. And um, we, with a, with a twin pregnancy, um, you have to go to a lot of extra appointments and see a high risk specialist. And we had an appointment with, um, with a, a perinatologist, a, a specialist that, um, looks in, in detailed scans at the at the babies and the mom early on. I, I believe it was about 11 weeks, and we were so excited to get a glimpse of the babies. And um, John's mom came with us to that appointment. We picked her up from school, and we were so excited. And we were um, the doctor was doing the scan, and and he was this particular doctor was the is was the best in Loudoun County. We we really during that pregnancy we just we were like who's the best? That's who we'll go to, you know, and. Um, so this is who our doctor recommended, my regular doctor, and we were there. And 
um, everything's fine and you start you see two babies and they're so cute and their arms and legs are wiggling and then he gets really quiet and then he's scanning and scanning and he gets really quiet and John's mom is standing in the corner and all of a sudden she is just fidgeting like crazy because we all know at this point something is strange. Nobody's talking anymore, no one's laughing. The doctor is very quiet and it's like the worst feeling and he just said, there's a problem with one of the babies. And um, he, um, he said, there's, there's some markers here that are very, um, they're very indicative that there's a genetic, a severe genetic abnormality with, with one of the babies. The other baby looks fine, but baby A is, there's a problem. So then he started showing us on the screen what he was seeing. There, there was no nasal bone on baby A. It was completely non-existent. And that's an indicative, uh, that's a marker for um, a trisomy, which could be a fatal trisomy, um, which is um, part of the DNA code, or it could be Down syndrome at best case scenario. If the baby were to survive, it would likely be something like that. Um, and then they, he showed us it's, there's, a, there's a piece of tissue on the back of the baby's neck, it's called the nuchal fold, and that is used, they take measurements of that, and um, an increased measurement is again another um, marker for these trisomies and baby A's trisomy, which baby A is Brayden. <laughs> we we know him and love him well, um, but so Brayden, um, his his nuchal fold was very increased. So again, another pretty significant marker. And um, and best case being Downs. Best case being Downs. Like if the baby were to survive, mm -hmm. you would be looking at something like Downs. Worst case, um, you know, the, 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 the baby may not survive the pregnancy. If they were born, you would be looking at something like comfort care, maybe a few hours of life, but, you know, n most likely a fatal condition, a trisomy 18 or um, there's, a, there's a couple other ones. But, um, yeah, so best case downs, worst case, you would be looking at a baby that didn't live. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so I'll let John take over the conversation. So mom was excused to the waiting room. We were just in kind of not speaking. They ran some blood work and then we ended up in the doctor's office and he um, was just kind of sharing with us what his recommendation would be from that point forward. Now if the baby lived also, could there, is there a, something in between? Could it live at a the baby live, but be, you know, vegetative in its mind or yeah, there's just all kinds of all kinds things of things. Could yeah, the, 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 the markers that we saw in that ultrasound, the nuchal fold increase and the lack of the nasal bone were indicators of the of the conditions that would either be Down syndrome or Down syndrome like um, or if one of the trisomies that were fatal. So yeah. to, to know for sure, sure, you would have to do um, genetic testing, which would, they take a needle and, and go into the amniotic sac and pull fluid, which he was more than willing to do for mm -hmm. us. That puts a pregnancy when it's already in a precarious situation at a higher risk. So it, that, those were the things that we were discussing in his office later. But yes, it's... So it was a very crucial and, and uh, you know, the consequences, of course, just something that any new young couple, you know, just horrified by the... It's not an easy thing to hear. Yeah. And for him, for the physician, it's not an easy thing to say. You don't yeah. say those things unless you're pretty sure that there is something very wrong. Right. And so, John, why don't you share a little bit as part of what their suggestions were and... Yeah, he was not, you know, obviously real positive in that whole conversation. Um, and he's just thinking of, okay, what's, what's going to be best? What do we normally do? And... Uh, probably two or three times he really recommended, you know, you guys should really consider terminating this one fetus, the unhealthy fetus. And um, so we, you know, kind of dismissed him. And, and I don't remember the entirety of the conversation. I, and he kind of came back to that and, and really said, you should strongly consider terminating. And, um, you know, we're both, uh, you know, we knew going into this that all the infertility that we went through um, just to get to a viable pregnancy that anything could go, you know, and we just <clears throat> trusted the Lord through it. Um, we trusted the Lord just to get pregnant, just knowing it's not in the Lord's hands. It's either your, it your yeah, well, it is in the Lord's hands, so it's a better <laughs> way of saying it, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> but the, <laughs> that it's a hundred or nothing, you know, right. with the Lord. It's and His being, um, you know, in distress and having issues. He kept pushing that termination with us, and I finally just looked at him and said, "Look, if you're going to ask us to kill our baby one more time, we're going to have problems, and we need to stop talking about that and just tell us what what our options are going forward." And I don't remember the entirety of the options. Um, it was pretty overwhelming, but I do remember leaving um, discouraged and wish we had taken the ultrasound um, pictures with us. Um, but you're not thinking about that at the moment. Nope. But you know, I, I believe it was a Friday evening, and we knew people were going to be up here for fellowship that night. And um, you know, just went home and we're like, what are, what are we going to do? Um, and you know, we knew we weren't going to terminate, so it was just hey, we're going to have this kid and believe the Lord. And uh, I remember calling you guys and I remember you coming to the house and praying for Hannah and praying for us and the babies and uh, just believe in the Lord to heal him and Amen. to touch him. And, um, you know, further just, um, you know, reaching out to the folks in the body just to pray and to believe and, um, you know, followed up with our specialists the following week and looking for you know, another opinion, another high-risk specialist. Mm -hmm. And that's who these guys are. This is what they do, um, is they just focus on babies that are going to have problems. And so we went to another, um, another specialist, uh, knowing, and it's, it's kind of hopeless uh, at this point, mm -hmm. you know, unless the Lord heals them. And um, I'll let you fill in some more of the details because I don't remember them all really. <laughs> Well, we did. We, we knew we weren't going to um, continue on with that physician. Um, we just, it, it wasn't That's a good fit. Sure. So, um, and then I don't know, I think John, he was scared of John <laughs> after that point. <laughs> so, um, no. So we, um, we got another recommendation for a, for a physician out in Fairfax. And um, I remember, um, I remember before we went to that appointment, I wasn't really fearful or anxious, which for me is a huge is a huge trial. Always has been. Still, something you know, anxiety and fear, I definitely deal with. And um, I remember just being excited to see them again. I didn't really have an expectation of of healing or not healing. I knew from from that afternoon, from what John said, he was like, "Look, babe." I don't know what our path is, what God has for us, but I do know what his word says. And until he says differently, like we are just going to believe what his word says. And his Amen. word says by his stripes, we are healed. And, you know, our children are going to be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And when pastor, when you prayed for us, you said the exact same things, you know, we are going to, we're going to ask him for strength and for grace. And we're going to stand on nothing less than his promises. And, so I just had a piece going into that appointment. Again, no expectation, but just really excited. Um, and um, Emily, um, my sister-in-law, Emily Gardner, came, came with us to that appointment. And uh, we met the new doctor and explained the whole situation and um, made it very clear we were not interested in, in discussing anything other than getting these babies here and keeping me as healthy as possible through the mm -hmm. process. And they were very understanding of that. And um, the technician was amazing. She, she was really sweet and just said, okay, well, you know what? Let's get to Troublemaker Baby A. Let's just look right at him. <laughs> and um, so she started the ultrasound and she, she um, rubbed that, the skin right over his face and I saw a nasal bone, Hallelujah. clear as day. And I just yelled, I'm like, that's a nasal bone. Emily, do you see, it's a, na tell me that's a nasal bone. And the technician is like, it's a nasal bone. I'm like, Jesus healed this baby. There's a nasal yeah. bone that there wasn't a nasal bone there a week before. Praise you, Jesus. And um, the, she just, the technician was like, okay, can I, can I move on? Like, can we look at more stuff? And so, no, let's look at the nasal bone. I know, I did. I'm like, can you print me a picture of that, please? And she's Hallelujah. like, sure. So um, we were just crying and, um, we were, I was just trembling and she went through the whole scan a hundred times, looked at him, looked at the measurements of, of baby A and baby B. And the doctor came in after that and we were going through tons of pictures and John and I kept asking him questions and he was like, I don't know what to tell you. Like you guys are having two perfectly healthy babies. Oh, I don't know what more you want me to say. And we're like, nothing, goodbye. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so um, that was just, that was really a huge moment for us. Praise and um, just 
something that we just have gone back to a hundred times because it wasn't an easy pregnancy from there on out. You would think that the Lord touched him great. It would be, but we didn't. We, we had so many obstacles and really had to go back to that moment of him showing up and showing us that he was. Amen. Stop and think about that for just a moment. That's a creative miracle. Yeah. You know, and we've talked about that before. We talked about that spectacular healing Smith, Smith Wigglesworth where the man's was amputated and, and legs completely grew out. That's no greater than what happened with your yeah. baby. Mm-hmm. I mean, a creative miracle is a creative miracle. And yet we, you know, we war through these things still. The next battle, we're not always like, oh yeah, he got a nasal bone, so we're, everything's okay. You know, we're warring one at a time. When Abraham, you know, when Isaac uh, finally was born, you know, uh, Praise God. But then came the test of offering him up. And so in our lives, you know, it'd be great as Christians that we could just have this miracle and everything smooth sailing. But the process of this, you know, that for for the people that are hearing the testimony to not get discouraged and and uh, doubt your doubts Mm -hmm. and believe God. Amen. And, you know, so so those are exciting things. And so so now the. We're not seeing the growth uh, that, that we should be at this time. And maybe you can go on from there. This is uh, I don't know. Kind, of, <laughs> kind of scary. Yes. Uh, yeah, we were in the hospital at that point. Um, John was up there working and sleeping there. It was We camped out. Greer came up all, all the time to see me. Well, and you transitioned from bed rest at home, bed rest in the yes, hospital. Yes, yes. One, one appointment we went in for the, the specialist appointment and they were like, okay, well, you need to head on over to Fairfax for the duration. I was like, well, I need to go home and pack. And they were like, no, you just need to go, you know, just so. Go to the hospital. Yeah, we did go to eat. I'm like, I'm going to have a good meal before they put me in the hospital. <laughs> they will not know that we went to Silver Diner. <laughs> so we, we there did, are we, priorities in life. I mean, so. really, I had was, I was growing two babies, <laughs> for goodness sake. So, um, yeah, hospital food is not good. So we, um, towards the end of the pregnancy, Brayden stopped growing about at the 28-week gestation point. He really didn't gain very much after that. And so about, um, they, they scanned him almost every day. It was on monitors all the time because his movements were getting less and less. He, he wasn't healthy. But he was alive, Mm -hmm. you know, and the doctors would say to us, we don't know what we're going to be dealing with when baby A is born, um, but we will deal with, we will deal with whatever it is that, you know, here's what you need to prepare for. He could be very, very sick, but we will, we'll deal with it. And um, um, so I think it was, it was right at 32 weeks. I wasn't feeling great one day and um, the normal medicines that stopped my labor weren't working and they decided to take the babies that day. And I remember, um, I was always very nice to all my nurses. I really like, I appreciated them. That day I was not nice. I was like, no, nope, they're not coming today. The babies aren't coming. Um, And I was arguing with everybody, but anyway, finally after like an hour, John convinced me that the, they were coming today and we we're going to have babies. But they, the medicines that they could give me to, to stop the labor at that point, they didn't think that Brayden would. They thought it would kill him. Right. So they said, if we do the next, the last resort, he won't survive. So his best chance of surviving is to take them today. So we did. We had the babies. And... Um, do you want to talk about the delivery? Do you remember that? I don't, you know, it's he such passed a blur. No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, did he did. Say, he passed out. Right. Yes. I was, Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. It's good. John, your one job. You <laughs> cannot pass out. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, well, so Braden, uh, baby A came first. He was, the, he was the one closest when they did the incision. And our doctor, um, which they don't do very often, but they delivered him in his amniotic sac because it would be the most gentle way to to pull him out. And the anesthesiologist who um, had been working in his field for over 30 years, John had kind of brought him up to speed a little bit about our situation during the prep, you know, pre-op process. And um, so he was taking pictures for us and, and was being very sweet. And, um, but he was kind of over the curtain watching the delivery and he said, when the doctor delivered him in his amniotic sac and they, and they punctured it, 
he said, Brayden took his hands and just ripped it off his face. And he just looked at us and said, this kid is not going to have any issues. Like, he is a fighter. <laughs> I, don't know what, what, I don't know what they're worried about. And he was the scrawniest little, like, rat-looking baby. Like, he was barely three Very pounds. Little. And Very little. I don't know. I was delirious for days after that. But you guys saw him. I mean, he was a mess. Yeah. But he was strong, and he was a, he was a little fighter. And Colton, we keep leaving him out. Colton was born also <laughs> a yeah. minute later. And he was kind of chubby and cute and grumpy. Yeah, and actually had more issues after being born than probably Braden did, you know, just going through it. Not that the Lord wasn't with him, but, yeah. you know, just seeing all that the Lord had touched Braden through and all the concern up to that point. Colton's the one that gets kind of rushed out and gets dealt Trouble with, breathing. you know, with lung issues and right. breathing. And, and some of the respiratory issues after that. So it was kind of a constant thing of just reaching out and, and seeking prayer for them. You know, you guys coming up, and, and we have some great pictures of that, of mm. just, you know, you basically, and not just, I mean, covering them. And what a cool <laughs> representation of, of really what Father does with us and just putting his hand on our, our lives. But, I mean, you can see your hand truly the size of their entire body from head to toe, um, mm-hmm. you know, in their isolate and, and being able to pray for them and, and see them, you know, grow up into the, the children they are and, and go through the constant battles. But it's something we can always look back on um, because we've had plenty of opportunities to need to look back and have to trust Amen. the Lord and go, there's another thing. And these are, they're not fun to go through as parents and they're not certainly not fun as the kids have gotten older, the different condition, things they've gone through, but they're so minor compared to what so many people have had to deal with um, that it's hard to complain about. You know, you want to complain and you're tired and frustrated, but um, they're inconvenient. But the Lord still reaches down and ministers to us and has grace on us and through our unbelief and the discouragements and you know, just times of truly just not trusting him like a father and what you want your kids to do. Um, And being able to look back at those times and look back at the precious moments of the Lord ministering, not just to the physical needs of the kids, but certainly to us, you know, in our hearts and what we're looking at now when it's easy, but there's there's years and years of, you know, stuff that's going to be much more difficult. Well, and then as Braden grew up, you know, we have this miracle of the healing of his uh, curvature of the spine. And the, the people will see the pictures here, the different x-rays and how God miraculously, you know, just straighten, straighten that spine out. And we have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, but just to share briefly, why don't you share, you know, what we were looking at there. And the pictures will be very descriptive when Absolutely. they see them. but. Yeah. Maybe you can just share very quickly what... Sure. Um, He was about six and started complaining of back pain. And we noticed there was um, part of the... the There was a muscle mass on on one side of his back that was significantly bigger than the left... Than the other side. So that prompted us to get him looked at um, to figure out why he was in pain and if there was anything we could do to help him. Um, And we found out he had scoliosis he was um, in physical therapy for core strengthening to try to help even out the muscles and to, to alleviate some of his back pain. And it was fairly, you know, it was helpful a little bit. And um, the doctors were co- preparing us because having a 17 degree of scoliosis at six years old is pretty significant because uh, of the nature of scoliosis. It, it really increases with each growth spurt. And at six, you have a lot of growing that mm-hmm. you have left to do. So if they found scoliosis on me, a 17 degree of curvature, no one, it's not going to be a problem. But six years old, you're looking at a very severe case. So they were preparing us. You know, we'd monitor it very closely, scans every six months. Um, we're looking at a back brace, possibly surgery, likely, um, in a few years once it hit a, it, it hit a higher percentage. Um, at his follow-up, it was, it was a little bit increased. But actually, that was a, we had been praying. Braden, Braden is, is a boy who believes in prayer. He, he believes. He loves the Lord. He loves to read. He loves to pray. He's he got loves, a nasal bone. Or, he's got a nasal he's got bone. A nasal, he's got. <laughs> yes. And he's really well taught. So. Amen. Yeah. Um, 
so he had re he'd really been praying for his back. And so I remember at that scan when the doctor said, okay, well, it's about the same. It's maybe a couple of degrees worse. He was very disappointed because he was feeling better. So he thought it would be healed. Mm -hmm. And we were expecting it to be healed. I mean, that was our focus when Amen. we would talk about it. We would not say, well, if it is, we would say, yeah, we're going to go and it's, it's going to be healed. We're, we're expecting a good x-ray. So... Um, but the doctor said, you know, he's grown three inches since I saw him last. So he, he really should be much worse than this. So that, that's a good thing. So we were trying to be like, oh, it's Brayden, but it's a good thing. And he was like, not buying it. <laughs> so, um, so we just made an appointment. We didn't need to do anything. Hadn't really changed a ton. We'll go back in six more months. A few months later, he really started complaining of pain again. And um, we were just trying to figure out how to help him get out of pain. So mostly so he would sleep at night so we could sleep at night <laughs> because <laughs> when the babies don't sleep, the parents don't That's sleep. Right. So anyway, so he, we took him to a chiropractor who did x-rays again, showed the 18 degree curvature, 19 degree curvature. And, and the, doc the doctor thought, well, I think I can help him get out of pain and I might be able to help the scoliosis. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so he started a couple adjustments and it did really help his pain. So we continued with that for pain control for him. It seemed to make a difference in, in how he would sleep at night. And I remember I wasn't really expecting the chiropractic to really do anything long-term for him. Um, but he said at our initial consult, maybe we'll see some improvement in the scoliosis, maybe two years, two and a half, two years. And a half years. I was just happy that Braden felt a little bit better and could, could sleep a little bit better at night. So um, a few months into treatment, we were taking him about once a week. The doctor said, he's looking really good. He's, he's responding really well. And through this process, we got to know the doctor really well and shared with him, of course, you can't stop my kids from talking about Jesus. And, and we'd invite him to everything. And he, so he definitely knew who we were. And always, we just had lots of opportunity to get to know this man. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember it was less than six months. But he said, you know, I think I want to take an x-ray of him before, I, before that adjustment I think we were at every few weeks at that point. He said, before I touch him, let's just take an x-ray. I'd really like to do this. We had one scheduled with them in the fall, maybe six more months. And um, so we went to the x-ray room, and I'm standing behind this little wall, and Braden's getting his x-ray, and it's all digital, so the Im images immediately come up on the screen. And he takes this x-ray, and this back pops up on the screen, and it is completely straight. Hallelujah. I probably yelled. Me and knowing <laughs> me, I probably yelled. and. Brayden was like, Mom, and I'm like, Brayden, it's, oh my goodness, and so we're crying, and we're hugging, and then Brayden's like, maybe I moved, maybe I messed it up, Mom, do you think, and I'm like, no, son, I no, I do not, I'm like, that. this is, you are healed, he's like, are you, and I'm like, Brayden, there's no other Praise explanation, the doctor pulled up the new x-ray immediately with the old x-ray, and we were just, I'm like, taking pictures and sending it to people, and you know, it was just really exciting, and um, um, yeah. the doctors, we, we, left the x-ray room and for about 15 minutes you could see doctors going in and out of that room and our chiropractor was just like on cloud nine just so proud of himself <laughs> <laughs> and um anyway so they can fix everything right yeah. exactly so it was kind of a big buzz and he comes over to us after you know after he got to show Braden off and um, and he was like, well, I'm really excited. And I said, I'm so excited too. And I'm so appreciative of, of how great you are with him. But you, you know that I have to tell you why this child's back is straight. And he was like, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> and I said, yes, we have a whole lot of people praying for him. And we have a God who hears prayers and answers prayers. Amen. And this little boy is healed because of him. And he just looked at me. He gave me a big hug. And he was like, I believe that's true. Amen. And I said, yes, it, you know, there's and, not anything else you can say. And I think the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the picture, yeah. right? And so we give God all the, all the glory for that. Thank you for being with us today. We look forward to you joining us next week on Sword of the Spirit. We're here to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. If this message has ministered to, challenged, or inspired you, please visit us at swordofthespirit.org.